Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today we are taking a look at the Castle Arts colouring book selection. This is a quite a recent product release from Castle Arts. I do believe it was last month they launched these colouring books. So they have kindly sent us some copies to have a look through and do a little bit of colouring in. So there are four in this range. Uh, the first one I have here is their Flowers colouring book. Now all of these books are A4 and they also are all landscape so the spine is on this left hand side and in a landscape format. So you can see here the first one is the Beautiful Flowers colouring book, a collection of 36 colourful flowers specially curated by our resident artists. So that sounds quite interesting. Next we have the Merry Christmas colouring activity book. So this is um, a bit more varied and uh, it says a compendium of colouring sheets, Christmas cards and a seasonal calendar specially curated by the resident artists. The fantasy colouring book, so that again back to the, the more sort of standard colouring book format, 36 dreamscapes and uh, unsurprisingly um, there's one on castles as well, they are castle arts, so we're going to take a little bit of a flick through each of these individually and then we will do some colouring in one of them to test out the paper. So here, uh, here is the Christmas one um, which I'm most interested in because it's more of an activity book. So I want to have a little look here and see what's what. Um, so on this inside cover here we have a place to put, you know there's a nameplate which is, which is nice as well. And uh, there's a little bit here about the, the colouring book itself. So it's telling you what you can use on the paper and a little bit of advice on framing things because so, obviously this is a bit more of a um, an activity book. So that's really nice as well. Re a resident artist recommend, obviously uh, they're going to recommend Castle Arts products. <laughs> and they've even got some reference pictures here as well. So if you're sort of um, 12 days of Christmas colouring sheets. Yeah, look, they've actually got reference pictures for everything. So if you're struggling for colour ideas, there's actually ones there for you. Okay, so it says here at split up into sections, 12 days of Christmas colouring sheets, Christmas cards for colouring, oh that's good, and seasonal calendar for colouring. Eternal calendar offers 12 lovely month by month colouring projects. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. I understand. So, okay. So these are the 12 days of Christmas. This is a partridge in a pear tree, obviously. Um, and that goes on and each, each verse of the rhyme is on the left hand page. And I like this line work because it's grey, it's not black. So it's a little bit more subtle and you won't see it as much a three French hens. <laughs> okay. They're really nice. They're really nice. Seven swans are swimming. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'll, I'll give you that. Twelve drummers drumming and they're all animals. Love it. So this is instructions for the cards as well. They're telling you how to cut them out. And there's actually a message inside as well. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's good. So lots of traditional designs there. Dog with a Christmas hat. Standard. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And there's quite a lot there as well. And uh, here is the seasonal calendar. So what they've done is they've just got the days of the month along the bottom. And then the actual one there, and then obviously the picture for you to colour. Quite a detailed picture as well for February. I don't know if I would want a Christmas picture for February because there's Christmas wreaths there. Um, I think that's a bit of an odd choice. I would have said that should have been the December picture. And here we go, March into spring. Okay, so most of the pictures are suitable for the time of year, like the flowers in June. There's <laughs> a little frog there as well. Okay, nice. And autumn. Oh, there's oh, we've got a Halloween picture for October. Very good, very good. Okay, that's actually, and there's even a swatch, a swatch page in the back, and a little bit about uh, about the brand there as well. That's actually a really nice put together book. Um, I I really like that. I wasn't expecting that. I was just expecting a, a straightforward colouring book. So that's lovely. So let's take a look at some of these other ones then, which are in a bit more in the traditional format. So the other three books are a much more standard format in terms of what we're used to with colouring books. So let's take a look at the, the fantasy one. So the same sort of idea on this inside cover. We've got a little nameplate and they're talking about paper and suitable media to use. And again, there are reference images. Cut out your colour references. So if you're struggling for inspiration, then they have images for you to copy directly, which is kind of nice if you're a beginner, I think. Um, so let's see. Okay, they've got a border around them and uh, there's there's a little bit of spiel on this left-hand page. Here be dragons. Uh, the line art is quite thick. I think it would have been nicer if this line art was a little bit more delicate. Let's see what the story is. Uh, that doesn't seem as bad as this one. It seems really thick in this one. So 
It may vary between the images. Yeah, it seems that it does. Oh, this is cool. The Ice Maiden. That's a lot of colouring. Wow, that's a lot of colouring. Kind of like it though. Yeah, so the, the line width seems to vary between images, which is fine. There's, that's not a problem. Um, depending on what media you're using, because the good thing is because this is one-sided, um, you could use things like markers or paint on them and it wouldn't really matter. All you're going to do is maybe take out some of this writing here, which isn't the end of the world, really. Egyptian Beauty, that's pretty cool as well. I like that one. So overall, this is quite an interesting book. Dragons in Winter. Okay, I've obviously been a fan book dragons are going to feature quite heavily one would imagine i really like this one as well love birds okay yeah i like this oh i like the underwater ones well. okay yeah this is this is nice this is pretty good there this is the glossy paper though i don't know how well that's going to do for um you know for your your colored pencils but it might be good for other stuff as well okay so that is the fantasy edition We've got the beautiful flowers colouring book here. So I'm assuming these are going to follow the same format. Yeah, so same inside cover there. And again, look at these beautiful, beautiful images for you to use as reference images. Amazing. So nice. Like, so, so nice. And these look really pretty all together. Like, that, that's nice in itself. Never mind the colouring book part. So let's take a look at these. Oh, Aster and Daisy. So they're telling you about the flowers. And they tell, they tell their perennial. <laughs> well, that's nice to know. Uh, no, now, the line art, I'm going to zoom in and show you this, the line art in this book is questionable, very questionable actually, it seems to be really unsteady, really pixelated, really uneven, and some of the lines aren't even joined up, which is fine, but it's, it, that looks real, I'm hoping that this is just this one, oh no it's not, there's no smooth lines there, it's as if someone's done this with a really shaky hand, um, and I mean some of that, that's just lazy there. That's just laziness. That's not been tidy, tidied up digitally. I'm, I'm really disappointed in this one. The quality of the line art is very poor compared to the fantasy book. And it's such a shame because these flowers look absolutely gorgeous and no amount of, you know, it doesn't matter how good your pencil skills are, you're not going to be able to cover up the fact that the, the line work looks janky. I'm really surprised at that and I'm surprised that Castle Arts have let this book go out in this state. Uh, yeah, not impressed at all and it's every single image. I'm hoping that I've just got like a misprint or maybe I've got one of the early editions that wasn't um, ironed out so to speak but to send this because Castle Arts approached me. I didn't go and ask them for free stuff. They sent me these colouring books and I'm really surprised they're sending stuff like this. Uh, that's really disappointing. It's not getting any better as we go through. Okay, so uh, that's really off-putting and on, on that note, I would not recommend the Flowers colouring book. The uh, fantasy one, absolutely, but this one, mm, yeah. I think Castle Arts need to take a little look at that if that was not uh, an anomaly. And finally, we have the Magnificent Castles colouring book. And uh, I've already had a look in this one because I thought it was going to be really cool uh, to colour in that. The reference images in this are spectacular uh, because it's actual photographs of the castles, obviously, which I absolutely love. And there are several Scottish castles in here. I was going to be really mad if there weren't any. And uh, the range and, and the style and colours used, they've done really well in picking out ones to put in here. And um, especially since they've got one, uh, like a Portuguese one here that's all kind of like multicoloured as well. So you don't have to draw like grey buildings. So it's super, super nice. And uh, they've, they've done a really good job of picking different spots. There's quite a lot of English castles in here, which I'm, I'm kind of not that surprised about really. Uh, we're, we're pretty good for castles in the UK. So it's one of our favourite things. <laughs> There's a couple of really nice German castles as well. So, and obviously Edinburgh Castle's in there because if it wasn't in there, what's the point? Um, so that's there. It really, when you look at it though, it just kind of looks like a big house. <laughs> It just doesn't look like a castle, it's just a big house. Like, there's no really impressive turrets or anything on it, it's just, yeah. There's Aileen Donning Castle as well, um, which is on the Western Isles, and that's actually very iconic here in Scotland. Um, it's a very nice castle too. Anyway, let's stop talking about castles and look at the line work. So you can see that the line work here is much, much better. Um, it's very delicate in some of the images as well. So the, the quality is fairly good throughout this and it's a bit more consistent. But you can see there, this is something that I always struggle with. See when it's landscapes, I, I, I kind of struggle with the line work a little bit and find it quite difficult to match up my pencils and my colouring skills to because I always want to try and replicate the photograph, if that makes sense. So I think this is a really challenging colouring book. Plus, I absolutely never 
ever colour architecture. I don't draw architecture, I don't colour architecture. So I thought this would be a really good book to test the pencils in, um, you know, to see how the paper quality is and also kind of give myself a little challenge into the bargain. And uh, obviously I'm going to pick a Scottish castle. So yeah, this, this is pretty impressive and uh, I really like it. So I have to say that out of all of the books, I am impressed with them, apart from the flowers one because the, the quality of the line work lets it down. The Christmas activity book is spectacular and I really hope that some of you have already bought yourself one and already know about it because if you haven't, um, as with all of these, you can head to the Castle Arts website. It will be the top link down in the description under the video so that you can go and check these out and buy yourself a copy if you find it's something that is tickling your fancy. So the idea here is I am going to test a couple of brands of pencils just to see how they behave on the paper. Me doing my usual, I like to put my, my grubby mitts all over it. I do make sure I wash my hands before I do these types of videos just so that there isn't a lot of like um, oils and things you know on my skin because I, I do like to touch things. <laughs> um, but yeah on a first on a first feel this paper feels quite smooth so I don't know how well we're going to do with pencils to be honest but we will find out and as I say we'll try a couple of different types of pencils to see what would work best. Obviously you can use other media and it, it tells you in the front of these books and uh, what they recommend and say it is Castle Arts products obviously. So yeah I thought this would be quite good as well because there's water and sky uh, we can test out a few different colours too. Alrighty ho ho so I have here at the cave desk. I have a set of polychromos pencils. So they are obviously oil based pencils. I have a set of Prismacolors. I didn't open this because there's loose pencils floating about in here. Um, so very soft wax based pencils and I also thought it would kind of be rude not to <laughs> have the Castle Hearts uh, soft touch pencils as well. So we're not going to colour this whole image, obviously. We don't have time for that today. But what we can do is test out the pencils a little bit just to see how they go with the paper and also find out um, if I have a preference. Obviously, I know that's not entirely helpful to you guys because everybody's preferences are different, but you know you'll get a running commentary for, from me on it as well. That'll help you make more of an informed decision for yourself should you wish to purchase some of these books. So I'm going to start with the polychromos and uh, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit of a little bit of sky. Now the interesting thing here is there's clouds because it's Scotland, it's always cloudy in Scotland, that's kind of what we do. But there is a real opportunity here to get some colour in. So I am going to pick out a pink colour and I think I'm going to go alizarin and crimson. Not that it really matters what I'm choosing. No, let's go pink carmine. And let's pick a, a sort of sky blue colour. Let's go, let's go sky blue. Or, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to try. This is a cloud here and then there's a gap here. So I'm going to pop some of this down in here. And uh, that feels okay. That feels quite nice, actually. how this feels in here. I'm going to try and build up uh, a few layers as well but I just want to see. The pencil's going down okay. Uh, I would say it's actually quite reluctant is the phrase that I would use. It's not it's not unhappy but it's not exactly you know desperate to get out there. It's weird because the paper feels quite smooth initially and then when you start using your pencils you realise that it's actually quite toothy. So this is going to be um, light, lots of light layers kind of job I think. I don't know how well, unless you're a one layer smasher with Prismacolors, I'm not sure you'll get on all that well with Prismacolors. But as I say we're, we're going to find that out. So I'm just working over the top here and it seems to be, and I've come across this before, it seems to be that subsequent layers of pencil get you get on better. So the more layers you have, the the better. The, well, basically, just the, the better you get on, um, which isn't exactly a bad thing either. So, like I can feel the texture of the paper under um, under my hand here, and it's quite you know I feel as if I'm having to work at that. When I get into that second layer, it's quite satisfying. So yeah, I'm I'm reasonably happy with that. Uh, I don't know, I'll wait and see how I got on with my other pencils. I don't know if I'd want to use polychromos on this specifically. Let me try some others. 
So let's 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 try the let's try the the prism colors. Let's do that. And I'm going to do a, a sort of blue gradient here. So this sky is going to be really blue. Going to be super pretty. That, that that was my test prints for my my winter postcards. That's funny. Oh dear. Right. Okay. So let me just I'm just going to swatch these out. I think probably uh, Caribbean Sea or Blue Slate. Let's try in this little section up here. So I don't really know how I'm going to feel about this Prismacolor situation. I'm going to go with a light hand to begin with though, and I'm just going to focus on this tiny little bit here to see if we can get going. Yeah, that first layer doesn't seem to be doing much at all. Guys, Prismacolors are not the way forward. Because this paper's toothy, it's absolutely destroying my, my lovely point on my pencil here. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this, honestly. I think so far I'm leaning to leaning towards the polychromos a bit more. I don't know actually. See now that I'm kind of like I'm on the move here, it doesn't actually feel that bad. Okay, I'm finding it difficult to get this. Do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the paper in Rooms of Wonder by Johanna Basford. And I am almost certain, because what I'm struggling to smooth this colour out here, unless I press really hard, you know, unless I'm I'm burnishing with my pencil. This would probably be a candidate for a colourless blender, which again is something that I tend not to use, but in Rooms of Wonder it's been really, really helpful. So I'm just going to grab one right now because I've got one in this pencil case somewhere. I say I'm, I'm in a bit of a state of disarray, which is really unusual for me with coloured pencils. And normally I'm so organised, but I'm just, it's been so busy with cave mist that everything's kind of gone to the dogs, if I'm honest. Uh, right, let me see if I can find this blender. That's insulting to my dogs. Yeah, I think I'm sure. Yeah, I had one in a. Yeah, I've got one here. This was just my little stubby stub that's left. It's looking a bit sad. Uh, so I'm just uh, just going to see what happens here again. I'll zoom you right in because this will be quite interesting. I hope I'm right. I hope my years of expertise are beginning to pay off. I tell you what, I do need to do. I need to get a bit of a point on this though. <laughs> it's so small, so small. For anyone that's interested, this is a, a dual blade sharpener and it's M and R blades that are in it, Mobius and Rupert blades. Uh, they are my preferred pencil sharpening blade. They seem to last ages and they're, they're cheap, they're cheap. They're German made, they're good quality, good build quality. Right, off we go. Please work. Gem Gem likes being right. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, looky here, huge difference look and if I just carry on down here I should be able to transition into my paler colour here without any problems and that is exactly what's happening. Okay, yep, yeah, so I am an advocate if you would like to use Prisma colours in here. A colourless blender is going to help you along along your way beautifully you can see the difference between the two sections now this this is advantageous because if you want an area that has a lot of texture you can use the paper I'm a bit overexcited there zooming out sorry guys you can use the texture of the paper to your advantage there and you can also smooth it out just by using a colourless blender you can buy these individually you can buy them the same as you can buy open stock prismas um, and they are absolutely worthwhile for this very reason. So yeah, I'm not adverse to Prisma colours. Uh, I, I don't think personally I would favour them over Polychromos on this particular paper, but I think this style will suit quite a lot of you because I know some of you quite well when it comes to your colouring preferences. Right, let's have a little do with the castle arts. I will need to get a swatch chart out for this because I'm not as familiar with these pencils. I don't use them very often. Um, so a lot of the castles like yellow colours and there are quite a lot of like ochre yellow colours here. So let's try and find something that's going to suit us for that. Oh, this looks suspiciously like castle art, but yeah, okay. So yeah, the, like the yellow ochre and the terracotta light there might be good colours to be starting off with here. Again, I'm just going to take a quick look at the reference photo. <laughs> so let's start with, see it's the way the light's hitting the building as well. I'm actually going to start with Naples yellow. Naples yellow, right, there's Naples yellow. And I think I want, I think I want yellow ochre and terracotta. Right, 
Okay, so I've just been having a little go with the Castle Arts pencils here, and these are much, much easier to get on with. Um, they, they're they going down really well, and I've managed to lay it up quite well there as well, um, if you can see that there. They they just feel less resistant, and it's, it's kind of not surprising, really, that Castle Arts have picked paper that goes well with their own pencils. It kind of makes sense, but the it's just a little bit less effort required with these compared to the Polychromos. But the actual result I'm getting with pencils is very, very similar. So either or, I wouldn't recommend the Prismacolors personally. I just feel like it's a little bit too hard work. And I think that the the Prismacolors are just too soft really to be working uh, with this paper. That's just the, the kind of feeling I get from it. As I said earlier, it is down to preference. Like a lot of it is just preference and you will find what works for you. And I weirdly, I'm quite enjoying myself here. I'm not really into architecture normally. I think though, because this is a place I have been, um, you know, I'm, I'm relatively familiar with it. Maybe that's kind of getting my juices going a little bit more. I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm having pretty, pretty good fun here. So I, I took the cool grey deep. I'd used the yellow ochre on this side part because the sunlight, if you look at the reference image, the sunlight is hitting the, the front part and it's hitting the, the bridge here. So this facet, this gable end here is going to be considerably darker. And I've taken this cool grey deep over the top of the yellow ochre and that's a couple of layers and it's gone down really well and I'm happy with the way it's sitting on the paper. It's given it that sort of slightly weathered look as well, which I really like. So all in all, definitely like surprisingly enjoyable for something that I wouldn't normally colour. But as for the books themselves, I think that you would have to lean towards, if you want to use coloured pencil anyway, definitely lean towards pencils that you would normally use for more textured paper. If any of you have used the Amazon Create Space paper uh, for any length of time, I would veer towards the pencils that you might use for that. This is definitely not as textured as the Create Space paper. I would definitely avoid a softer pencil if you don't want to have to do a lot of smooshing and blending. If you are Prismacolor, like hardcore or softcore as the case may be. <laughs> That's a great joke. I'm surprised I haven't used that joke before now, actually. Uh, uh, yeah, if you're if you're Prismacolor soft to the core, and um, then I would highly recommend the Colorless Blender. That will help you along the way substantially if you're going to go down the Prismacolor route. So I hope that you have enjoyed this today. I hope you've uh, got a little bit excited. Overall, I think, um, weirdly, I think the Castles book might be my favourite closely followed by the Christmas activity book just because it's a little bit different but obviously it's very um, season specific well I suppose you can call it any time of year really can't you but it's only really relevant just now so I think that this one might be my favourite and uh, I may I may continue on with other things I'm quite interested that on the cover here they have got watercolour brushes and paint brushes and you know that kind of thing and it might be quite interesting to do one in watercolour because because of the line work it would look like a line and wash which would be pretty cool as well so I, I've actually this has actually kind of boosted my creativity and my motivation a little bit to explore you know colouring architecture which is something like I've absolutely discounted my entire colouring career all, all four and a half years of it and this has kind of changed my mind that to me is the sign of a good product if it makes you, makes you want to go and do something then you know that's pretty good so these are available all four of the books are available on the castle arts website which is the top link in the description these are currently retailing on the castle art website at 17.99 so there's a bit of a discount on them so you can head over to the castle arts website if you would like to check these out that is it for today guys i hope you've enjoyed this uh, little meander through uh, this new product if you've made it this far, if you could take a moment to give us a thumbs up, that would be absolutely fabulous. You'd be doing me a huge favour. And I shall see you back in the cave on Thursday for a scroller challenge video. So have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye for now.